Then I spray painted the whole thing white with the paint I had gotten for the alabaster sphinx I was making for the Egyptian Museum project. When it was all dry, I painted lightning in gold letters on the middle piece of wood, and I made a little lightning bolt symbol above the letters. It looked pretty professional, I have to say. Dad was like, wow, Jackie, you were right about the sled. The next day, we went back to Skeleton Hill with lightning. It was the fastest thing I've ever ridden. So, so, so much faster than the plastic sleds we'd been using. And because it had gotten warmer outside, the snow had become crunchier and wetter. Good packing snow. Me and Jamie took turns on lightning all afternoon. We were in the park until our fingers were frozen and our lips had turned a little blue. Dad practically had to drag us home. By the end of the weekend, the snow had started turning gray and yellow, and then a rainstorm turned most of the snow to slush. When we got back to school on Monday, there was no snow left. It was rainy and yucky the first day back from vacation. A slushy day. That's how I was feeling inside, too. I nodded hey to August the first time I saw him. We were in front of the lockers. He nodded hey back. I wanted to tell him about lightning, but I didn't. Fortune favors the bold. Mr. Brown's December precept was, fortune favors the bold. We were all supposed to write a paragraph about some time in our lives when we did something very brave and how, because of it, something good happened to us. I thought about this a lot, to be truthful. I have to say that I think the bravest thing I ever did was become friends with August. But I couldn't write about that, of course. I was afraid we'd have to read these out loud or Mr. Brown would put them up on the bulletin board like he does sometimes. So instead, I wrote this lame thing about how I used to be afraid of the ocean when I was little. It was dumb, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wonder what August wrote about. He probably had a lot of things to choose from. Private school. My parents are not rich. I say this because people sometimes think that everyone who goes to private school is rich, but that isn't true with us. Dad's a teacher and mom's a social worker, which means they don't have those kinds of jobs where people make gazillions of dollars. We used to have a car, but we sold it when Jamie started kindergarten at Beecher Prep. We don't live in a big townhouse or in one of those doorman buildings along the park. We live on the top floor of a five-story walk-up we rent from an old lady named Donya Petra all the way on the other side of Broadway. That's code for the section of North River Heights where people don't want to park their cars. Me and Jamie share a room. I overhear my parents talk about things like, can we do without an air conditioner one more year? Or, maybe I can work two jobs this summer. So today at recess, I was hanging out with Julian and Henry and Miles. Julian, who everyone knows is rich, was like, I hate that I have to go back to Paris this Christmas. It's so boring. Dude, but it's like Paris, I said like an idiot. Believe me, it's so boring, he said. My grandmother lives in this house in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour away from Paris in this tiny, tiny, tiny village. I swear nothing happens there. I mean, it's like, oh wow, there's another fly on the wall. Look, there's a new dog sleeping on the sidewalk. Yippee. I laughed. Sometimes Julian could be very funny. Though my parents are talking about throwing a big party this year instead of going to Paris. I hope so. What are you doing over break, said Julian. Just hanging out, I said. You're so lucky, he said. I hope it snows again, I answered. I got this new sled that is so amazing. I was about to tell them about lightning, but Miles started talking first. I got a new sled too, he said. My dad got it from Hamacker Schlimmer. It's so state of the art. How could a sled be state of the art, said Julian. It was like $800 or something. Whoa, we should all go sledding and have a race down Skeleton Hill, I said. That hill is so lame, answered Julian. Are you kidding, I said. Some kid broke his neck there. That's why it's called Skeleton Hill. Julian narrowed his eyes and looked at me like I was the biggest moron in the world. It's called Skeleton Hill because it was an ancient Indian burial ground. Duh, he said. Anyway, it should be called Garbage Hill now. It's so freaking junky. Last time I was there, it was so gross, like with soda cans and broken bottles and stuff. He shook his head. I left my old sled there, said Miles. It was the crappiest piece of junk. And someone took it, too. Maybe a hobo wanted to go sledding, laughed Julian. Where did you leave it? I said. By the big rock at the bottom of the hill. And I went back the next day and it was gone. I couldn't believe somebody actually took it. Here's what we can do, said Julian. Next time it snows, my dad could drive us all up to this golf course in Westchester that makes Skeleton Hill look like nothing. Hey, Jack, where are you going? I had started to walk away. I've got to get a book out of my locker, I lied. 